All right, we're back. It's still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa to our first major conversation. Of course, um, you might already have had uh, the developments from the Court of Appeal, but this is not just the Court of Appeal. It is the Presidential Elections uh, Petition Court situate at the Court of Appeal. Now, this Presidential Election Petition Court yesterday were waiting with bated breath for the outcome of um, the application filed by the Independent National Electoral Commission. Um, well, the PEPC, uh, sitting at the Court of Appeal in Abuja, uh, yesterday gave the Independent National Electoral Commission the nod uh, to reconfigure the bimodal voter accreditation system, BIVAS, uh, which it used for the presidential election. The court in a unanimous decision by the three-member panel of justices held that stopping the electoral body from reconfiguring the BIVAS would adversely affect Saturday's governorship and state assembly elections. Now, it dismissed objections that Labour Party and its presidential candidate, Peter Obi, raised against INEX move to reconfigure all the BIVAS devices. Now, according to the court, allowing the objections by Obi and his party would amount to tying the hands of INEC, who is a respondent in this case. Nevertheless, we must also point out that the court ordered INEC to allow the applic applicants uh, inspect and carry out a digital forensic examination of all electoral materials used in the conduct of the elections as well, as to avail them the certified true copies of results of the fiscal inspection of the Beavers. It's an interesting development, not just in the in jurisprudence, but in politics in Nigeria. Um, it's it's just something that um, makes one excited to fo follow. Um, we have joining us this morning uh, to discuss this very all important subject and issue. A guest whom we're so happy uh, to have. I'd like to say a very good morning uh, to Amuo. Or do, okay, I'm just going to leave this out. So I'm sorry about that. Um, our guest is Amor Dauphin, who is a political analyst, and he joins us uh, from Lagos. I'm told that we have, we have had a change, and uh, glad I can see that. Uh, Mr. Elgene Emmanuel Ego, who is a member of the House of Representatives, representing Amor Dauphin Federal Constituency in Lagos. Thank you very much. I apologize for that. A bit of a technical challenge, uh, Ms. Ego. Sincere apologies for that. Thank you very much for your time. Yeah. Thank you. I'm honored to be with you. And... Uh, on the issue of the court case, which will be instituted against INEC, uh, which the appeal court uh, rejected, I think that the appeal court should have considered the legitimacy of the last election because uh, INEC themselves clearly told everybody that beavers were going to be used in the election. And INEC themselves also told, reminded everybody that beavers have been used in the uh, in the, the election in Anambra State, and it worked well. They use it in the kitty, it worked well, and they use it in the uh, or should say it also worked well. So if it worked well in three states across a period of over six months, why would it not work well in food in a single state in this last election? So I think what they did was bad. I don't know whether they did it purposely because from what we are saying, they did it purposely, they made sure the results were not uh, of literal, I mean, of uh, the literal uh, is to the, uh, the, the cyber so that people can see the election. What was done was run by a manual collision as the government's job. Also, you can see where people are disappointed. A lot of people have never voted before. Or uh, rather, the voter log will go at the plus, less confidence in the voting system. And the melee came out when I then told us that this, their votes will count. And from what we are seeing, the votes did not count. So, also, the court of appeal should have been more compassionate, should have been more understanding in their ruling. But as it is, they are rude. Uh, and I think that those who have the opinion that the election was flawed, to continue that video, 
a lot of people seem to have lost confidence in the evil, the ability of the Supreme Court to give. Okay, Representative, uh, so, sorry about that. I, I just did ask you uh, the first question, but I, I know there's a bit of network lag, so in case you hear me interrupting you, it's because of that, and I apologize. Um, we're told that uh, our House of Rest members are now to be known as Representative, so um, I, I will have to just, uh, uh, you know, I didn't call you Representative when we started. I also apologize for that. Um, there are two things here. I, I, I want you to tell me how you think this will play out. Because the, uh, the Presidential Elections Petitions Court uh, is on one hand saying that, yes, INE can go ahead and uh, reconfigure the beavers if they need to do that, because not allowing them to do that will amount to tying INEC, the hands of INEC. But they're also saying that um, the, the applicants, the parties who have applied to, uh, to inspect the beavers uh, and other electoral materials, sensitive electoral materials, can do so. So in your opinion, are they going to be allowed to do the inspection before the reconfiguration? Or since the, um, uh, the Presidential Elections Petitions Court has, has given them the nod to reconfigure, they will just go ahead and do their thing. Okay, I don't know how this is going to play out. They postponed the elections, of course, yeah. we know. But how do you think this will play out? Well, if they go ahead to go and reconfigure before the various presidential candidates, if you look into uh, the papers to see what happened uh, on that day, we will call it. Uh, um, I will call it almost an abuse of power. To say, oh, we have the power. We have decided to we'll go ahead. But let Alex not forget that they are serving the people. The commodity they are selling is election, and we and the national assembly budgeted billions upon billions of naira for them. Each time they ask for money. We never cut it. We approve it for INE so that they can do this job creditably well. For them to now come out and say, oh, we have a project, therefore we'll go ahead. But they are aware of the controversy following the election. If they have done the right thing of, you know, uh, put everything on beavers, uh, put it into their server, nobody will be complaining. But they said they went to the old manual system. And this is where the complaints come from. In great the old barrier system, so much figures have been changed. We have been seeing figures all over the social media and even so physically. Where you see figures that have been there keepers several times, have been changed several times, that the paper looks so unreadable, you know, just to get a certain uh, figure. I think I need to be ashamed of this. If this is a nice country, the entire uh, I make a uh, uh, hey, Mark, at the top, who just resigned and say, Hey, we are fully with this duty. We cannot continue it. Please, Mr. President, appoint another person. That, I think, should have been the honorable way for INEC to go. But as it is, they are still thinking of uh, continuing the, the believer's uh, modification. I think it's bad. But just yesterday night, I had a, a shameful news that the election has been postponed. For another one week, which of course ordinarily should not have happened if INEC had not done what it did. So we hope that with the postponement, INEC will consider once more um, the rights of of those who voted to have your representative look at the beavers, you know, so that their case in court can be strong. All this problem we are having today will not have happened if INEC did not do. What if the INEC can do the right thing? Nobody will be complaining. You will not even need one returning officer to begin to read the result of a local government or a seat, or even at the federal level. All you need to do will be to log into the uh, internet, INEC uh, portal, and then you will see all the results. People don't need to go and gather in one place to say, we want to announce uh, a result, collision result. From the local government, from the world, from the state. What we have done now is to go back to the old, old, old system. So we ask all okay, the people. Okay, I, I like to bring your attention. Money. I, I, I you like know? us to look what, what, what have they done with it? Uh, so that is my contribution. 
Now, um, Organer, please let's, uh, you know, look at some of the issues. We know that the court had granted, or, you know, uh, INEC a request to reconfigure the beavers. Uh, that's what it is. But, you know, moving forward, fast forward, there are a lot of, you know, issues, other issues that uh, you want to look at now. They have been given, uh, granted, you know, the permission to go ahead and reconfigure. They've also stated that there will be backing up data, as it were, to the back end of the saver. Uh, I'd like you to respond to that. Do you believe that INEC has what it takes? It is also within the uh, electoral acts and the laws, so we the lay down laws uh, that they do this. So what I, my, my question is, do you think that they can do that? Now, secondly, some experts have said that INEC may have been forced to shift the polls because the process of reconfiguring the beavers takes real time. So, um, again, I ask you, uh, do you also believe in this accession? So, two of them. Organe? I know. I think we, we probably seem to have like a, a, a network issue, connection issue. But as soon as we're able to re establish a uh, connection. Organe, can yeah. you hear me? Yes, I have a question. So, so, I mean, if you look at this, the court has actually uh, gone ahead to grant INEC the uh, uh, privilege or opportunity to go ahead and reconfigure the beavers. Yeah. And if you look at the postponement of the election, it's in connection with the fact that, hey, you can't reconfigure the beavers uh, within a certain time. It was just how many days before the elections. But um, looking at the thoughts of experts, you're saying that INEC may have been forced to shift the polls because the process of reconfiguring uh, the beavers takes real time. So do you think that that's the case, that the hands of the umpire has been forced? Well, um, if the hands of the umpire was forced, I want to say that they forced themselves. As it is now, no, no, so people I mean, I mean experts are saying that they have. It's, it's not what is. INEC has given their position that um, this is what it is. They need time to reconfigure. The essence of this postponement of the election by one week is that they are able to reconfigure the beavers following uh, you know, the uh, permission that's been granted by the courts. And so experts are saying that beavers can be reconfigured real time. So now there's also another thought that's saying they have been forced to it. My question to you now is, do you think that this is, you know, away from all of the excuses that INEC has given and they're forced by an external force that we don't know uh, or interest, however it is? Well, um, maybe you may be right. Uh, not me. Uh, technical issues. They are forced there. Maybe they are not able to complete the beaver configuration, which is the, the best way we as they are asking for additional weight, they don't know they do that. But as it is, uh, people are find out trust INEX, you know, because someone who came out, he was incredibly mean, and everybody trusted him to be a good person who told me he came in just want to vote, to those who have been voting before, who said that vote don't count, they don't want to vote again. Everybody trusted uh, Professor Mahmoud. And I met. And so it came as a shock where people now learned and the commission said that the beavers were not used. These results were not transmitted electronically. You know? So because of that, whatever I make is doing now, people take it with a piece of salt. You know, if it's a technical issue that is disturbing them, I'm still making the light off. The light will soon come back, but let me open the window. Good. And good. Hold it. Can you hear me again? So, if it's technical issues that uh, the storm I make that is making them to extend the period, or they are doing it in consideration of the appeal, but uh, what can I just say? And there's nothing I could say that anybody. All right, I think uh, we, we have to leave it at that um, with some technical challenges there. Um, Representative Ogene Emmanuel Ego, we sorry about that. Uh, we've, we, we will have to go at this time. 
Uh, he's a member of the Federal House of Representatives representing Amor and Dofi Federal Constituency. Uh, Mercy, is, uh, it's hard for me to know, in that part of Lagos, you have um, a lot of people who are not really indigenous to Lagos, and it's very possible to vote, you know, non yoruba into um, uh, uh, federal uh, elected positions. And I was going to ask him about that because of the conversation going on about some of the, you know, governorship candidates on the side, you know, I wish we had time to ask no, him. But, but if, you, you if know, you also look at uh, that. You know, this is because of the and this is one of the examples, you know, he himself holding a federal legislative position. It's, it's, it's interesting to see. Um, you want to add something before no, we go? We, okay, we, we <laughs> all right. I wish I had a chance to ask him. It's, it's a real debate, you know, we know that um, uh, Ruth Viva's father, uh, Mr. Laole, a Ruth Viva lawyer, had to come out yesterday to say my son is from Lagos. But, 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 things, but, you, know, but you know, the conversation uh, as to, you know, the uh, so. presidential candidate or the president-elect mm. of uh, uh, the All Progressive Congress himself, Ashiwa Jubola. Of right? Nigeria. Uh, of Nigeria. And then you want to ask, is he uh, from Lagos? And they also no, no, have no. a question. No, I, I'm saying, if, if you bring that, that's, that's another, another, that's another, ask, that's another. Uh, so, that's another I, thing. I, yeah, I, but, but I, anyway. It's saddening, Kofi. You asked if I was going to add. Now <sighs> I should add a bit. But I think that it's saddening that we're having a conversation that someone will look at you and say, are you, you know, where are you from? You're from Cross River Abbey or from where? Is it, how, how does that even make uh, any difference? You know, the section section um, 177 is quite clear, you know, it's unambiguous as to the criteria to become governor of any state in Nigeria. So, but I want to take him, his thoughts, since he's a, he's um. He's, he's a case study, let's say. Anyway, we'll, we'll take a break. When we come back, uh, short quotes uh, amongst telecoms companies in Nigeria will be aligned with what we hear. You know, what is up with that? What does that mean? Stay with us to find out. <laughs> 